So good afternoon and welcome to the third 2030, a conference cycle based on the road to a more sustainable and climate resilient Mediterranean. Today's dialogue will be about environmental activism in the southern and eastern Mediterranean region, the role of the youth as driver of change. As we know, as the climate emergency has been intensifying over the last years, more and more young people have been raising their voice to demand stronger climate and environmental action in the name of global justice. Inspired by the example set by Greta Thunberg and other young activists who launched the Fridays for Future movement, young people from many countries in the world have been marching in the streets to urge action from public authorities on an issue that directly affects them in the long term. Making a strategic use of their moral authority and social media networks to mobilize their fellows, they have succeeded in making their voice heard, engaging with population and influential the global, national and local climate agenda, to the point that they are now considered a powerful drivers of change. The Mediterranean region has been no exception in the rights of youth climate environmental activism. From Rabat to Athens, passing by Marseille, Tunis or Barcelona, young Mediterranean activists have been taking the streets to denounce the lack of action to address the climate crisis in a region particularly vulnerable to the climate change and environmental degradation. Beyond demonstration by, with media coverage, they have been at the forefront of a growing grassroots movement, creating associations, organizations, and networks, connecting youth activists across both shores of the Mediterranean Sea. Understanding the role of youth as driver of change is crucial to develop approach from associating young activists to the policy making process, while taking advantage of their energy to mobilize the society towards the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. It is equally essential to understand the challenge they are facing to empower them as important actors of the public debate in the countries of the Mediterranean region where they are not considered as such. To discuss about this topic, today we have with us Mrs. Hajar Kamlici. Mrs. Kamlici is a climate and environmental and sustainable expert. She has 13 years of experience in water operation. Besides, Hajar has a vital role in the civil society movement development. She is the president and co-founder of the Mediterranean Youth Climate Network, considered by the Union of, for the Mediterranean one of the 10 success stories of the last 10, 10 years of the region. The network presents 22 Mediterranean countries and consists of NGOs and youth movements who work in the climate action and sustainable development. In addition to Hajar's work, she has an extended experience in raising awareness among the decision makers, both of local and inter international level. She also joined CARBON as the Mediterranean coordinator to monitor and promote city sustainability and had been appointed recently as the executive director for the Mediterranean Climate House. So today we have Hajar with us. It will be a pleasure listening to her. And afterwards, we will have a Q&A with the, with the audience. Hajar, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Mikael, for the kind introduction. Well, uh, as you said, over 60% of the population in the Mediterranean region is under the age of 30. The Euro Mediterranean is one of the youngest regions in the world, and too often youth are left out of the processes that shape their futures. Participation is part of the process uh, of the empowerment of young people. Nevertheless, societies often do not view young people as in, uh, indispensable contributors to policy formulation, evaluation and implementation. In recent years, some governments have taken significant steps in promoting a place for youth in decision making and a greater, greater involvement of youth in the, in the home, school and community will not only benefit the, their socio-economic environments, but also their own capacity and personal development. Participation uh, must be seen as a means and an end. Also, an active and informed participation by young people is not only consistent with, 
but also demanded by the rights-based approach worldwide. Therefore, the voices and contributions of the youth are crucial for the effective implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreements. As recognized in the preamble of the Paris Agreements, which reaffirmed the intergenerational equity as a guiding principle shaping climate action. However, we believe that the voice of young people is not yet fully heard in policy-making processes, as it is not so easy for youth to be consulted by governments. Despite so much at stake, global governance is in crisis and is failing to respond to the political, economical, social and environmental breakdown throughout the world with international institutions who are unable uh, to act with the speed, urgency and gravity needed. At the same time, we have never had so much civil society organization mobilized, individuals and campaign movements with the skills, experience and finance needed to uh, champion, deliver and evaluate societal change. Youth and civil society organizations seem able to foster transformative innovation by and through their actions and participation in social and policy processes. Nevertheless, to achieve the climate neutrality objective by 2015, it is essential to go for a local approach. Local and regional authorities are well, as well as civil society, are in the best position to know and assess the needs of their territories so as to cope with their vulnerabilities and provide the necessary tools to implement their roadmaps. Though youth participation itself can cost time and money in the short run, the process will result in activities that are based upon issues facing youth and upon their understanding on the environmental and societal problems and will be therefore more relevant to the needs of their generation. Their participation can lead to better targeting of benefit to youth, the group that can best identify the best the impacts and uh, of certain specific laws or policies. It can also help to secure the sustainability of uh, uh, activities as the primary stakeholders and will be more invested in their momentum, therefore. Youth participation may range from consulting and consensus building to partnership, evaluation and management. And I think this is the right evolution for the participatory approach and youth engagement in decision making. Institutions should provide mechanisms for youth to participate in deliberations on policy and to help guide and set priorities with the, within such discussions. Youth should be engaged not just with governments or in policy making, but in all aspects of society setting the stage for their continued participation throughout adulthood. Young people are getting uh, so much attention, like, uh, uh, like uh, said by Mikael on, on presentation. Uh, and this attention, it's, it is drawing more young people into the movement. The role of youth participants uh, those aged from 16 to 24 years at the United Nations climate negotiations has revealed that adults perceive these activists as having greater moral integrity than others attending the talks because they are not being paid to be there and mostly uh, young climate protesters don't represent someone else's agenda. Their message is, is strikingly direct. They can, they can say uh, a lot of things that older activists can't say. They don't have filters that adults might have. Might have. But several youth in the southern Mediterranean region face challenges. One of the main challenges faced by, by youth in, uh, in the southern eastern Med region is the current political situation in many countries, no doubt which makes going out full on very difficult. Another challenge is bringing together youth from several countries to discuss and agree on regional subjects using predominantly online tools 
is very difficult. Moreover, much capacity building and training is needed within the regional and national CSOs to help run uh, things more efficiently. Nevertheless, in the South, the Arab governments are surprised with Arab youth participation in the worldwide movements against climate change, and some countries and some governments stay prudent and vigilant. So we all are working to build a trust relationship with them. On the other hand, much things are happening on the internet governance. Little of it involves young people. However, youth may be perceived as, at, uh, as the starting point for movements on social media. Younger people, moreover, are more inclined to become involved in social media as they are the more frequent users of these tools. So, so having quick worldwide lines of communication and predominantly involving young people is exactly how social media should be used especially for uh, effect and effective activism. Involvement in social media builds support and creates a network of partners for important issues. Therefore, it has the capacity to have an impact within political and legal systems. The intention of social media is to engage with people outside of these political and legal systems, but it has the capacity to have an impact within them. Social media, if used effectively, has the ability to put pressure on and influence governments. These tools offer people a chance to gain a perspective on issues in other, uh, in other nations, and it allows people to become involved in means of communications often perceived as controlled by mainstream and elite media outlets. It is important that young movements spread the right message, hit their target groups and understand development levels for social media activity. And this is uh, uh, an important or se severe problem within the, the, the social media campaigns uh, so far. There is a danger uh, that online activism could slow down the movements as a result of loss of interest. And it is important to understand that uh, while youth may have the skills to involve themselves in such forms of activism on social media, it is also imperative that the means of social media be used properly in order to work effectively. And young people really believe uh, in the issues they are standing for, and then they can attempt to gain support for these movements even when interest seems to be fading. So really, youth can be the driving force to keep the interest virtually going on, or also not just virtually, but also uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the field or in the ground, real, real, real life ground. The future of how effective uh, youth involvement in social media can be really depends on the level of interaction between the public and these social media tools. So activism and awareness raising is a long-term fight, no doubt, even through social media, and must be kept up in an effort to engage younger audiences and prepare them for future involvements. I think the transformation may very well start with youth. It may be wishful thinking, but I believe that a critical mass from the youth movement could blaze a new path forward for others to follow. Of course, that will require all those who are willing to go beyond reading and supporting this through social media, although it's, it's, uh, it's great as well, to step forward to lead this change in the, in, in the ground, I was gonna say, in the real life, in the ground life. Especially for the younger generation, the interest is not uh, uh, some stand alone, separate domain. Uh, because the internet, internet it's, uh, it's, where, uh, uh, it's where the lives are, uh, it's where lives functions are carried out. It's not merely our uh, post office or our telephone. Rather, it is the epicenter of our world. 
the place where virtually everything is done. It is where friends are made, where books and films are chosen, where political activism is organized, where the most private data is created and stored. It is where we develop and express our very personality and sense of self. Many youth do not see a connection between politics and their daily realities. However, this does not mean that they are not interested in their futures. A process of building trust may be initiated when young people have increased access to the decision-making process. Young people can emerge from such exposure with increased self-esteem, better communication skills, and better knowledge about their communities and effective leadership. Such opportunities are likely to arise in community-level activities, and youth are more likely to flourish within an institutional framework of representative local governments. Research, research has shown that most youth have a strong desire to actively engage with their communities, but know little about the decision-making process. By knowing more about the political system, young people will be better equipped to identify, support, and monitor the election of candidates who press uh, for economic progress, social justice, and peace. And well, climate action and the energy transition also presents an, an opportunity to youth to apply their skills to take uh, on new roles as energy professionals, decision makers, entrepreneurs, and leaders in order to overcome the renewable energy knowledge gap uh, between for developing and de between developing and developed countries that continues to increase and the gender disparities in the field. All, all of this happening uh, as equity and equality becomes more the more prevailing topic in the world so far. However, uh, this requires requires governments and industries to prioritize skill building for youth, women, and marginalized groups. Education serves as the foundation to continue to develop the necessary skills and governments must guide skills training to meet the needs for, of this, their societies, such as transition into clean energy. And for this reason, re renewable uh, studies should be an integral component of modern curricula, as well as sustainability. The, the, this generation of young people has also proven to be innovative, entrepreneurial, and well-versed in technological know-how. Considering the undoubtedly important role that young people have already played in solving challenges to advance the transition through entrepreneurship and innovation, governments should facilitate this further by helping local startups compete with international developers and provide microcredits to them. Moreover, energy clubs, climate energy hackathons, youth energy awards, mentorship, call for proposals, incubators, accelerators, etc. are needed to support their development. Apprenticeships and internships and entry-level positions are needed to build skills through the work experience to youth. Uh, Meanwhile, there are some successful examples of youth climate uh, and environmental movements in the Mediterranean region. I'm just going to shed the light on one of them who was led by uh, a community-led uh, initiative named RISE 2020. This, uh, this project was the winner who won the United Nations 2020 Global Climate Action Award. And uh, it was uh, the, the initiative, to, the, the initiative RISE 2030 focuses on empowering women and youth, aiming at, capacity build, aiming at capacity building and improving living conditions through access to education and employment. The RISE 2030 launched the first all women solar team in Lebanon to challenge the gender stereotypes in the male dominated construction sector. 
in this context, 13 female trainees installed a solar system at a waste sorting and material recovery facility in Karawan. The project was implemented in the Federation of Al Buhaira Municipality, which serves more than 18 municipalities around the Karawan Lake. The community members were trained and educated to design and install a non grid solar photovoltaic system that would cover 100% of the facility's daily need for power. And later, a second team installed a solar tree in the public garden. In addition, the management team leading these projects is composed of mostly women, with a total of 147 women involved and benefiting from the activities. They are mostly all young women under 14 or 35. The projects also helped female-led small businesses prepare and sell their rural processed food through the women's associations of the town. The project was hailed as a national success in Lebanon as the first all-women team in solar energy. And finally, youth organizations can build on the strength of their territories in order to turn challenges into opportunities when, ba when ba place-based strategies are disposed and implemented. So thank you so much for your attention. I'm giving you back the floor to Miguel. Thank you, Hadar. A very interesting presentation. It's clear that the youth are a strong, this, a strong movement with a very critical opinion that is very healthy for democratic societies, and we need them. We need to use them. And and I, I would like to 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 start the Q and A with 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 a question. You were you were. You were pointing the challenges that 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 youth are facing, especially in 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 South Mediterranean countries, uh, the ones about the current political situation, the challenge to being together, the capacity and building and and training, the capacity building and training necessities. But beyond that, how do they act, youth people in society? If, where the participation to the public debate is locked and where at the same time climate change is not a topic. This, in this kind of, of societies where, where there's this double, double wall, you know, uh, uh, how, how they are able to, 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 to raise their voice about this topic. I think that this is something that, that might be interesting to, to, to know from, from the audience. And, and another topic, another question, I'm going to show you, uh, uh, throw you another question and, and then I, I'll give you the time to answer them. Don't worry. Uh, another question is about, about greenwashing. You know, greenwashing, uh, 2030 agenda, uh, it's seen by, by part of the society as, as a tool for corporate companies to do greenwashing, to be able to present themselves as more sustainable. And, and, and this, this is something that affects the agenda, the, the reputation of the agenda, of the 2030 agenda or the, of the SDGs, and, and especially on, on, on young people. And, and because they, they might be more critics and then they feel that, that this agenda is not as fair as it should be. You know? how, how, how do you think we can, we can overcome this, this, this feeling about, uh, about how can, how can we, despite the work that, that the, the corporate companies can do, but how do you think we can, we can uh, find this perception of greenwashing from corporate companies, uh, uh, this perception from the young people? And thank you for, the, for both questions. Well, yes, it is really difficult for the youth in the in the locked societies, locked societies, to express their views uh, liberally and uh, without pressure. I know that they feel frustrated. They are frustrated, and even with the climate uh, climate challenges are now taking place, and we uh, testify of the impacts uh, uh, all over uh, all over the world, not just the regions of the country. But yes, how they feel, they are frustrated and uh, they are like um, uh, uh, 
restri rest restricted action. Their actions as rest restricted for sure, but their only and only way to, to skip this is the social media. They are, they are making their way to social media. Uh, the different social media are now opening, uh, uh, opening these windows to discuss and to campaign. Some of them use, or use of course, their organizations. Some of them don't have the right to implement formal organizations at all. They can't, they don't have the right to, they can't go uh, to be authorized to establish an association. So they are working more in informal, informal, non-formal networks through social media. They deliver their messages. Uh, now with the, just the, the launch of the, the clubhouse also, I remarked that many, many youth, uh, many youth from the southern, South Med region are extremely active and uh, the discussion is really bold than what they can say at uh, 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 at uh, formal uh, manifestations of events. So they try to skip it uh, in that way. But the problem, as uh, I was discussing earlier, the social media is like the great uh, and wonderful invention that freed the, freed the views and the opinion. And it was most inclusive way for everybody youth and all civil society and everywhere but it is also can be controlled and this risk of people like losing uh, the motivation the momentum that we feel when we are gathering in person when lots of when all these people who got the same views are exchanging in person in in human exchanges this energy keep uh, it's what uh, what uh, what let them uh, give them the give them the strength to come to 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 come forward to take forward actions in social media we can testify uh, their actions it can we can testify on waves actions campaigns ways where people are really really uh, excited and fervent on certain subjects then this wave because the wave in social media is not always uh, 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 always clear and uh, free. We're always gonna find other uh, other contradictory currents that will make uh, sure to to fade this energy. So anyway, this is this is the challenge felt and lived during these communities, as you ask. To to talk about on the the second question. Yes, actually. You you just touch, touch it on a point. Not only youth. I have been exposed to that uh, question once by citizens, communities. We were having an exchange, a dialogue between some citizens and CSOs, and we were talking about the SDGs and the 2013 agenda. That uh, some of them wasn't aware of it, but within the discussion, uh, people, some of people were we're having this thought that this is like just for uh, big corporates to show they are doing well for the world and also for high politicians to pass their uh, their uh, their political mandate uh, in uh, in a shiny way but it is not really effective we had that we had uh, we had uh, uh, strong debate toward it to make them change their mind because we need to all just open the perspective for the youth and all the citizens on what it is this agenda so this sustainable development agenda how people need to know how it came and how it started at the, at the beginning and when we have a deep analysis on the, the, the 17 sdgs and they go for which interests they are going and the topics that these SDGs are making uh, are making uh, emerge topics that wasn't really emerged in lots of countries in lots of societies they weren't even subject to discussion for people or either for their local governments or national governments so, so we having this uh, awareness raising campaigns 
to really discuss in deeper way, maybe changing this, uh, these views, because you know what problem? Because we are always shed lighting and uh, spotlighting the, the, how the commitments of some private sector in the sustainable development. And I see they have good contribution within the C their, their CSR, uh, corporate social responsibility uh, framework for those who uh, adhere to it. But uh, they are like uh, not a single player. This is, this is, uh, this is like a big match uh, who's, uh, who everybody is a player and the youth can have like the, the, the defensive, the defensive players of the, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the match. Uh, I, I saw in Morocco we have uh, an association here which names the, the Youth for uh, Sustainable Development. Those youth are really, uh, really sympathetic and nice. They, they were doing a great, great effort raising awareness among youth, among their, uh, their, uh, their peers. And they, tr they succeeded to vulgarize little this, uh, this uh, agenda and SDGs, 17 SDGs. Meanwhile, there is a lot of people, a lot of youth that are not aware of it. They don't know it and don't know moreover what is the climate action about. So this is just as to say that we have to work all on it. This is a responsibility for civil society to raise awareness, but also uh, decision makers and policies to be, to have, to invest more in this uh, outreach to people and the youth. Okay, thank you. Very interesting, Hajar. I have several, we have several questions from the audience. So, and, and I have some other questions from myself, but I will leave it later. Uh, <laughs> just, just let me jump into one question from, from the audience. It's, the, the question is, is the following one. Do you perceive differences between environmental activities between the North and the South of the Mediterranean? How do they complement each other? And, and, and what, kind, what, what can environmental activists from the two shores of the Mediterranean can learn from each other? Well, uh, yes, there is some few differences between the environmental activists uh, from uh, Southern to Northern shores. And it was uh, it was uh, 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 stronger. The difference was stronger at the big in few years, six years ago or seven years ago. I think with the years, this the difference is uh, disappearing slowly. But in the southern Mediterranean, we can remark uh, activism with local uh, locally led projects. People are focused. They, they really want to have solutions. Uh, to their daily problems and they don't really uh, focus on environmental policies. They don't go towards advocacy to see the source of the problems. This is very important where they are uh, mobilizing and trying to find solutions which is amazing, but they, they lack this part of environmental advocacy. They don't, they don't go for it so uh, uh, easily. I was remarking at the beginning of my of me being uh, involved, my involvement in uh, civil society, environmental civil society engagement, and the transnational cooperation with other civil societies. I was I remarked this difference because mm, my colleagues from the north were really focused on the advocacy, and I think we learned a lot from them in this part how to deliver advocacy in in uh, in, uh, in in climate and environmental. Uh, issues and they were less on the topics projects on the ground than what was their colleagues in the southern i think we need uh, we need each other this is this collaboration and cooperation is essential and very important and enriching because every everyone or every sector or region has his own challenges and uh, uh, specifications and uh, uh, climate related issues, but this support from different organizations can go for can go forward for uh, for a better regional future. If we can take on, uh, speak on Mediterranean, we need we need the three of them. We need the advocate and we need strong advocacy 
in the, in the South, stronger advocacy in the South, and we need uh, big support of the local uh, uh, local ground projects and solution presented by this uh, this ground. So the future of activism is in this way. It's all about sharing the expertise, uh, empowering this youth, and strengthening the advocacy part. Okay, yeah, that's that that that. It's very interesting to see this de difference between. Between the needs from the from the south and the needs from from the north, no? the, the the more need, clear need of exactly uh, clear examples that give solutions in 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 the south and 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 maybe in the north with more the advocacy solutions, and it's interesting we having these 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 two dimensions. I, I will jump to another question from the audience, and 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 you, you mentioned Hajar that young leaders do not have filters so that they can raise up their voice with no prejudices right the younger ones the, the younger <laughs> ones right uh, yes uh, i think about my kids and i think that the younger one it's it's, <laughs> it's clearly without without filters uh, so 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 however how, how do you assess those critical voices who are against the inclusion of young leaders in policy make in policy making cycles due to their shortage. Are indeed young climate activists cap capacities enough to inform and influence policy discussions? If well organized, yes. Of course, we are not going to, to say that um, a random young, uh, young girl or boy who is really interested in the, in the thematic will do will do the, the discussion, the political discussion with decision maker and convince him. Otherwise it will be it will convince him with in his emotional uh, emotional uh, intake. To have uh, yes, if they are well organized and uh, uh, in certain structures who where they they where where their capacities are built, where they are uh, they are coached well. Yes, and I think there are now uh, few gatherings of youth that are really, uh, really impressive. But they are worked. They worked with their peers. They worked a lot with their peers to uh, to attain this level. To not say that they don't have. They have to open. They have to open uh, to open the door for this. The youngest one. I'm gonna say this early 20, 20s maybe, or late uh, teenagers to talk, to have this discussion. And it will be enriching in both, in both parts, because politicians sometimes need to see themselves in the mirror, the mirror of these youth who are sitting in front of them sometimes. And uh, they trust them, they need to give them trust, trust these youth. They are, uh, as we said, more uh, driven by their own wills, by the, by the moral will, not by any other agendas or uh, political will of, uh, of any parts. Okay, thank you. I have several more questions. One, one is very specific in, and it goes like this. Which country from the Mediterranean region possesses the, ma the major number of grassroots climate organizations led by youth? And sorry, how, I, I couldn't hear well. Uh, sorry, which countries from the Mediterranean region possess the major number of grassroots climate organizations led by youth? Uh, oh, led a very, by youth. very, very specific question. From, yes, from... led by youth. It is uh, difficult to say led by youth. I'm going to give you examples. Mainly, I'm going to go from the civil society then speak on the youth. In the south, the, the question about the southern Mediterranean, yes. yes. In the southern Mediterranean region, there are problems to gather NGOs in a lot of countries. There is, there is problem to, as I said earlier, I insist on it, to establish an association or NGO in a country. So. In some countries, I'm going to talk about Morocco because this is the unique, they have, we have this unique uh, experience on having the Moroccan Alliance for Climate and Sustainable Development, which gathers more than 800 
CSOs, environmental CSOs, purely environmental CSOs. Be among these 800, there are a lot of youth-led uh, associations and NGOs, okay? In uh, Jordan, we have an, an alliance for environmental, also environmental NGOs that gathers around, uh, I think, 100 or 18 or something, 90, 98, 98, something like this, NGOs. Among these those, this alliance, they are youth-led organizations. I can say, tell the same thing about uh, Cairo or Tunisia or Libya or Lebanon or other countries. I just have these two examples with big alliances of NGOs are present and have, uh, have an impact with policymakers and uh, they are involved in decision-making process. I, there is also what, the Khan Arab World, the Climate Action Network Arab World. This is the nod from the Climate Action Network International, which is the wider, uh, the wider uh, network for climate uh, action in the world. Uh, it has more than uh, 1,600 uh, NGOs, but the nod, the Arab nod, contains uh, 130 NGO. Okay. Among those ones, there are a few, not too much. A few of them are youth. But so far, I can, we, we, I, you can, you can, we can have a youth uh, network, national youth networks within uh, for sustainable development. But it's just keep the the sphere of action is not uh, very big. Okay, so far at the MYCN, we were trying to gather this youth, okay, trying to gather mainly the youth associations working on climate, environmental, and sustainable development. And uh, we have uh, we have uh, we have a good representation, but we know that we can have much more representation, really much more of it. Just if the the are uh, if if there was. Uh, a good uh, support and good support to meet people in person, to go to outreach these NGOs, these associations. In Sudan, for example, it, there was recently a really good will from some youth organizations. They started to be very active. They are having uh, uh, interesting dialogues with policy makers. I think the climate action tracker was supporting them. So as one of the first initiatives, well, I can cite a lot of a lot of initiatives on that south, but, I can, but to say what is the biggest network of youth, environmental youth led organizations, that's a very difficult question to, to answer and give a name. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I, I will try to. I, I know. Sorry. This 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 question might be a little bit uh, complicated. But so, so let's jump to 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 another one that maybe it's it's more easy to 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 answer. And and maybe <laughs> can you can you tell us more, uh, a little bit more about the Mediterranean Youth Climate Network? Uh, how does it work? Who are involved? What are the goals? Uh, I think that the, this is one of the questions of the audience, and I think it would be interesting to, for them to know it. Yes. Well, the Mediterranean Youth Climate Network is a network that uh, gathers uh, youth-led associations. We were seven to fund it, so we co-funded this network seven. We were the Moroccan uh, from Morocco, uh, IC and the Italian Climate Network, Climate Climate International, based in France. So the Arab Youth Climate Movement, who is covering mainly the Arab uh, or the Arab world, uh, and uh, Eco Peace Middle East from Palestine, and Eco and uh, <coughs> sorry, and uh, We Can the Women Empowerment Climate Action uh, Network. We we gathered uh, in 2016 at the Metcop Klima. It was at the eve of the COP22 in Tangier, at the eve of the COP22 in uh, Morocco, in Marrakech in 2016. And we organized the first Moroccan uh, Mediterranean Youth Climate Forum. Okay. 
uh, more than 200 uh, activists and uh, youth activists were present and it was uh, there was a, a big momentum and we decided together to establish this network and to be in the first major in a youth climate network and uh, be and have an impact on at regional level so we have been uh, our main missions were on about uh, empowering youth and strengthening the advocacy sharing expertise those are the training expertise and supporting the local uh, associations and NGOs who needed support. So we're going to play this bridge between the NGOs and make like uh, make a network of uh, of uh, uh, empowerment, youth empowerment, that aims to youth empowerment in climate action. So we have been uh, working uh, really hard to establish this network in and we we registered we re, we registered the the MYCN in Paris in 2018 it was a long breath take because as we said it is it is not easy to manage regional networks and uh, and uh, different people from different countries with different views to gather them so it was a success to register. Then afterward, we started gathering and organizing events uh, during climate action uh, uh, momentums like COPs, COIs, or either territorial climate uh, climate uh, uh, events. Workshop. We were establishing workshops to gather young associations, young youth, discuss uh, the, the the priorities and uh, the orientation of. The, their movements and trying to give the visibility and the support for those who needed to be uh, to be and to be to be visible to to access or to have the help they needed. Uh, actually, we are we started the call to spread the network. Uh, it was last summer. We had a few demands proposed. And uh, I think from here I can call from all other youth organizations and interested to jump on board. And because I am personally, I am really, uh, I am really uh, <laughs> rushed <laughs> to pass this this huge responsibility to other youth. Uh, this is my last moment as president. I was president for so long time and uh, really want and need to deliver it to younger uh, younger generation and to give it fresher uh, fresher uh, breath to Mediterranean climate action there is a lot of things to do and the covid-19 uh, these two years has hindered our work a lot it's affected enormously our work because the virtual uh, gatherings are okay for just to yeah, to have uh, to have a talk to have an exchange but to discuss on really uh, big matters and have impact we need to to meet we need to have this uh, human uh, human uh, human energy to build on it and uh, take this fresher bread we all need Okay, okay, indeed. The, 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 the pandemic that we're living right now um, has been like a stop in our lives and, 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 and in our activities. And, 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 and to be honest, at the beginning, and I, I think that, that at the beginning of the pandemic, we, we, we thought that the, that the 2030 agenda and the sustainable topics were not a priority. And, and, and they weren't for sure because there were yes. the health the health issues but 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 i think that that now in the in uh, in the next uh, afterwards we have realized that the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals and the sustainable agenda it's more needed than ever because the challenges that the the, the pandemic put it in front of us are the ones that we already had it just changed the priorities so, so, so let me go into jump into the into the last question, and and, and then I, I will let you also the opportunity to give a, a concluding words. But but let me 
let me move into the a more a more future question. So, how do you see the future for your for for youth and the next generation in a post twenty thirty Mediterranean? Can you give us some reasons to be optimistic for the future of the Mediterranean as regards of climate change and environment? Yes, I am. I, I have to be optimistic. <laughs> I can't not be of, uh, with all the dynamics. You know, in the Mediterranean region, there is very huge dynamic. And as we say, we say in France, un foisonnement, a really big dynamic of climate action actors. There are a lot of actors that are working in, the, in several parts or in several uh, uh, topics and issues in different perspectives. So, after 2013, it will we, we are we will be facing the difficult time. We will be facing these nine years coming will be really really tough uh, uh, on on the environmental uh, part and, and the political on the political level also. Because political uh, politics are very challenges too with the whole uh, green recovery systems, with the whole uh, security problems, with the, all the conflicts happening in the region but there is a lot of hope because there is a goodwill we are more than 60 percent are of us in youth in this region so with this with our will if we have a strong will and keep on this positive energy to go further to deliver for our countries to deliver for our region of course we are going to have an impact of course we're going to have a, a better uh, after 2013, if we are, if we don't do nothing or stop, or stop uh, working and just uh, and just uh, worry about it. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Hajar. Maybe I, I give you the opportunity to give uh, some concluding words if you if you think you so there's something missing. However, I think it has been a very interesting presentation and, 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 and food for, for thoughts that you have given to us. But if you want to give some, some, some final words uh, or final messages, please go ahead. So thank you for having me at first and thank you uh, for, uh, for uh, highlighting this topic, the environmental activism and youth in the Southern Mediterranean region. The final me messages I can have is uh, we need really uh, to strengthen the transnational cooperation. We need to work together, all the north, south, in this this Euromed cooperation, to have to have uh, to have a concrete results very soon in uh, our countries. Youth are key levers, are uh, a treasure for our countries or for our regions. They are need to be oriented. They are need. To be supported, so and to keep them in to to attract their attention. Because a lot of time we are we are, <laughs> we are like the uh, uh, telling youth you are not interested enough, you are not uh, uh, competent enough, you don't have enough skills to give your view or to 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 go for this thing or or this uh, this topic. But we need to trust them to empower the youth, and I think we will see uh, we will see we will see great results. So how we say on va voir des merveilles uh, on the region. Thank you. It is really an honor for me to have been here. As I said, this I cannot talk about the youth and claim I'm the I'm one of the youth from now on. <laughs> but it has been a really passion passionate journey. Uh, to spend these uh, six years or five years and a half or six years within the NYC and and having uh, meeting all the, the all the impressive uh, young people I have met also very bad politicians and great and inspiring politicians uh, I, I I met several diplomats with uh, supportive actions and other with not interest so this. This was a very rich journey that I really invite all the youth to 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 get on board. Not even for a few years. I know the turnover, the turnover rate in the activists in the youth activists is very high. 
so you just come spend a few times and go for other either they have professional uh, commits strong for professional commitments or they go for other studies and they tend to to lose interests uh, and priorities so just invite them to keep on as we, we as we did so far the years we have been managing professional lives families kids uh, uh, and the activism and it has been very positive at the end so that would be my ending, ending note thank you again Mikael. thank you hajar uh, very interesting and I, I will keep in mind that we have this 60 percent of us that are youth and and all the strength that they have that, that, that they have and we have to use it for a better future for for all just a few words to 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 thank you the audience to thank the audience for for all the all the questions that you have made very interesting questions and also to to uh, thanks to european institute of the mediterranean for organizing these these dialogues and remind you that the fourth dialogue will be on the 22nd of september uh, the title of the of the of the dialogue it's on the road to the cop 26 in glasgow climate diplomacy in the mediterranean and we'll have we will have the participation of ha hakima El Haite, the president of the Liberal right. International and former minister delegate in charge of the environmental of the environment, sorry, for the Kingdom of Morocco, high-level climate champion of the United States Nations International Climate Conference Scope 22. So I think it's a very interesting uh, dialogue that we'll have after the summer, after the, the summer holiday that we have this in Spain, and uh, hope that you will enjoy and, and, and join us in this future dialogue. Thank you very much and thank you from the European Institute of Mediterranean.